Hello everyone and welcome back. Touch of Malice has been recently buffed and updated and it now feels 100% more viable than it's ever been before. As there is a lack of builds for this one weapon overall, I have dedicated some time to show you 3 effective builds that will make full use of the exotic in action. These do use last season clips but as the update has now come through, you can fully transition to see the effects in all its glory. So our first build is called the Infinite Health Tom. The following build is designed for Warlocks and is going to allow you to have near infinite healing at your disposal without the need of moving from your spot. Utilising Sanguine's Time Freeze effect within our rifts and then combining that with Charlie Old God's effect, it's going to make area denial from a distance a cakewalk, while also enhancing our final round damage by times 3. For this to work, you need to have Devour and Charlie Old God's aspects, although Charlie Old God is the main key item. This aspect alone has a long duration to close off certain areas and then can inflict suppression, debuff and also health drain on top of what it already does. After that, having the echo persistence and undermining will push the build further to all out great heights. Persistence will increase how long our devour effects last, while undermining is going to make our grenades inflict a 15% debuff towards targets. As the build relies heavily on Sanguine's effect of pulsing our rift duration upon each kill made, we will need to invest into recovery and discipline for the maximization of the stat. Tier 9 for recovery for a 51 second rift cooldown is a sweet spot to aim for, although tier 10 is also achievable. You can aim for just tier 7 and then go for the front of restoration mod for a max tier 10 when fully using armor charges, but this will be down to user preference as Child of the Old Gods will grant class ability energy back to us upon defeating targets. This is the same for Discipline at tier 7, though it's using from the focus to reach tier 10 when active. This one here is going to be recommended if you want to actively debuff targets on a large scale. Perfectly, this will help circumvent the negative effects that Vortex and Undermine and provides towards players. Ultimately, these next mods will be the key mods that will affect the build from start to finish, so please make a note. Kinetic Siphon, Harmonic Siphon, Charged Up, Stacks on Stacks, Kinetic Surge times 2, Time Dilation, Reaper, and Powerful Attraction mods. And now lastly for weaponry, we will be using Tom, but also Void weapons as well for support. I do have the Commemoration Machine Gun with Redirection and Reconstruction. Two ideal perks you'll want for the weapon, as it really pushes the capability the weapon could pull off. Its Origin trait, Bray Inheritance, is going to be a key trait you should grab as this alone will be giving you ability and you back when kills made, although in a small amount. This can help when in dire straits and you have run out of ways to quickly get ability energy back when needed. And that should be that for that part of the build. Our next build is called the Laurelly Touch. This is a build designed for titans and is going to follow the same rule of our warlock build where we stay in one place. This time however, it's going to make you invulnerable to distance and long range attacks with the activation of our sunspots really Laurelly Splendor. By lowering our health through our final round, this can activate our sunspots that will grant us increased ability energy regen, super duration slowdown, and restoration effects. It will also apply scorch, so any sneaky enemies that decide to get up close and personal with us will suffer from a scolding. Now to make this work, it will require you to use Soul Invictus and Warm Flames for the ideal aspect perks to pick from. Soul Invictus is the huge one as this will extend how long we can use our sunspots while in them. And justice alone means we can stack its effects with our mods to further improve the ability regen we have going on. After that, having the Ember of Resolve, Ember of Searing, Ember of Solace, and Ember of Ashes will push our abilities effects to become even more stronger than ever. Resolve, Searing, and Ashes will enhance our grenade of choice to apply more damage and scorch buildup over time while within our sunspots. Solace is key to making restoration effect last longer for us, which does mean Ember Resolve can be taken off and replaced if you don't need that extra bit of healing. Now, stat wise, you're going to invest into Resilience and Discipline. Resilience at tier 8 will give us a 27 second cooldown when using our class ability, while also giving us a 24% damage reduction. This can be pushed to tier 10. However, the current cooldown is more than enough to get our class ability effect back when we do reach critical health, as remember, a lowly only activates when we have a full class ability. This is why you can see we have a number of healing fragments applied in case we aren't able to recover quickly enough. 
We also have the bolstering detonation mod to further help with class ability recovery when paired with our grenades. This means that Discipline at Tier 7 will be used in our Front of Focus mod for a Tier 10 stat overall once active. Using Fusion Grenades will give us an overall 37 second cooldown, which is perfect once you add in Sunspots to further cooldown rate as well. No other mods have been added as the Sunspots and Grenade cooldown has come out satisfactory upon testing. Ultimately, these will be the key mods that will affect the build from start to finish, so please also make a note. Connect Siphon, Charged Up, Connect Surge Times 2, Powerful Attraction, and Time Dilation mod. Now, weapons will be Tom as is the main focus of the build, but if you decide to use the Harmonic Siphon mod as well, then you may want to get a corresponding elemental with the build as well. I have the Royal Executioner with Incandescent and Envious Assassin, which is a good pairing to use when you need to cause a large amount of Scorch and Ignition to this small area. Although this won't play a big part in the build, it's more than handy with clearing areas and mini bosses out when I don't need to fight in close range. The Ember of Ashes mod will help enhance Incandescent effect, and it should grant you a much easier time with getting Ignitions. Our last build is called the Mask of Malice, and this is going to be another Titan setup that will be using the Mask of the Quiet Ones this time round. This is a very underrated exotic that not many people talk about, but its effects paired with Tom actually makes it a perfect pairing in the long run. You'll get 5% class BNT back when triggering it, and combining this with Void means that we have an easy way of abusing this for as long as our final rounds allow us to. To make this work, it's going to be quite easy, as Bastion and Offensive Bulwark is all that you will need. Aspects aren't going to be that effective as you will need to lower your health down constantly to trigger its effects. However, Gen Overshield will help with outlasting our build as we will be running and gunning instead of standing around all the time. From here, having the Echo of Vigilance, Echo of Persistence, and Echo of Starvation are the key mods to have here. All of these will provide an increase to survivability which will be needed if you want to trigger your effects more often. What I mean by this is that the following is more for anchoring content such as Legend tier, where income damage is much more higher than anything below Legend. This is why Devour and Overshield is going to be a common theme when using it as you play. For stats, you're then going to want to invest in Resilience and Discipline as the main key stats. Resilience at tier 9 will grant us a 52 second cooldown with a 27% damage reduction as well. This is going to be important to have as the Bastion effect will grant us an extra health and extra bonuses towards abilities via the offensive bulwark. We do have the bolstering destination mod to grant us ability energy back upon grenade kills, but even without it, you should be fine from here on out. A discipline is at tier 7 with a front of focus applied to the build for a tier 10 stat overall. With a Vortex Grenade, we will have a 1 minute 16 cooldown, which does seem quite high, but once you apply Offensive Bulwark's effect, should make it feel more like a 1 minute cooldown instead. No other key mods are needed here, as everything that we have is supporting the stat well, but you can add on the Bomber mod if you don't plan to use the Outreach mod that much. Ultimately, these will be the key mods that will affect the build from start to finish, so like always, please make a note. Connect Siphon. Charged up, connect surge times two, powerful attraction, and time dilation mod. And now weapons wise, like I said, and like always, it could be Tom. But if you decide to use a homolog cipher mod as well, then you may want to use a corresponding element with the build as well. I have the retrofit escape aid as my main heavy, as this will be useful against bosses to mini bosses with its selected perks. This used to be a very powerful weapon once Volatile Bounds was applied as a weapon, and although this has been nerfed, it's still quite a powerhouse. You'll want to have the target lock and 4th time to charm, as they still do reign supreme with the weapon. Also, with weapon's RPM and damage applied to the build with its origin trait, this can cover a lot of ground while still remaining to have a high reserve after full use. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below, but at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these in the future, then leave a like and a sub right here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you all again soon.